Hello everybody, Aline here. Welcome back for a new lesson. In this lesson, we are going to talk about how to transfer an image to your paper or canvas using the grid method. So far, we have worked on fruits that we drew freehand and we didn't have to be very precise with our measurements because fruits are pretty forgiving since you can find the same fruit in different sizes and are not super uniform. The same is not true if you are to draw a person's portrait, a house, an animal or objects that do not have a free form. So today we are not going to focus too much on finishing the subject, but more about how to make the grid. You will need a white paper, pencil, ruler, eraser, toilet paper or paper towel. There are some apps that make the grid for you and it's very handy because you don't have to print the picture that way you can jump a step ahead and save some time. I'm going to add the gridded picture on the upper left corner so you don't have to worry about this step. In the future, if you would like to try, you can print a picture and make a grid on the paper using a ruler and a pencil. What you need to have in mind when you use the grid method is to keep the same number of squares and the same ratio. Let's start. On your white paper we are going to make the same grid our reference photo has. So let's study that for a moment. You can see it has columns and rows. They go from 0 to 4 and each square is 1 inch by 1 inch. This app makes the grid start at 0. There are others that start at number 1. If I were to choose, I would create columns that are numbered, starting with the number 1, and rows with letters. So you could refer to each square, for example, as 1a or 3b. It's easy to locate each square that way. But working with what we have, you can see five columns and five rows, because I'm including the zeros. They will be from 0 to 4. That being said, if each square is 1 inch by 1 inch, I needed to have a horizontal line that measures 5 inches and a vertical line that measures 5 inches. That means we need to create a box measuring 5 by 5. I don't like to start right on the edge of the paper. So here I measure 2 inches from the left and 1 inch from the top to mark where my grid will start. You can measure from left to right 2 inches or 5 centimeters on the top and now on the bottom of the paper, marking them down. You also mark 1 inch from the top to start your grid. You can do it on the left side of the paper as well as the right side so you have a straight line. It doesn't have to be the same measurements as long as the grid fits on the paper, knowing that you need a 5 by 5 inches box. Now, from the first mark on the top, you trace a 5 inch vertical line. For every inch you see on your ruler, you can add a mark. You do the same thing for the horizontal line. After you trace your line, keep the ruler in the same place and add marks for every inch.
With this done, we are going to make our grid. You just need to connect the inch marks you made vertically and horizontally. Here I start to connect the horizontal lines and then the vertical lines. You can see you have 25 1 inch squares. Now you can take a look at each square and see where you need to draw. You should pay attention to where in the square the line starts. Ask yourself, is it in the middle, or more to the left, or to the right? Does it start on the top, or does it only show a little bit on the corner? I like to add little dots to have an idea where the lines will be touching. Since the glass has some straight lines, it's easier to use a ruler and connect them as opposed to tracing each square individually. I was following this picture on my tablet and notice after I drew the bottom of the glass, the picture didn't completely fit in the screen, so I had to erase and fix that part. You can start with the outlines of the glass and then you can color it afterwards. Most important though is for you to try to replicate what you see in each square.
Now with the outline of the glass cup traced, we'll add some details we see in each square. Before we start to color the glass cup, I like to get rid of the grid lines. It will erase some of the glass that you drew, but you will still be able to see the lines and fix it. I will not erase the rest of the grid lines in this exercise, but when you draw something using the grid method, it's good if you erase all the lines before you finish the work, because depending on the medium you use, it will not cover the lines.
Here I can see the previous lines, so I just trace on top. I don't have the steadiest hands and I noticed that I did the opening of the glass a bit too big. I will go back later and fix it.
using a tiny eraser. It helps with highlights or to erase small areas. Now you can start adding a layer of this pencil all over the glass cup using almost no pressure. After you are done, comes the fun part. You are going to blend this pencil using paper towel or toilet paper. You don't need a ton, just two or three squares of toilet paper or one piece of paper towel. You see that it will smudge everything and then you can use your eraser to clean up around and also add highlights. Another thing you can do is to cover the sides of the glass cup with paper so you don't blend outside the glass area. Take a look and see if you needed to fix any part of the glass that got erased.
I thought this glass looked a little too dark, so I used my eraser to lighten it up and then blend it a little more with the paper towel. I decided to make a glare by erasing part of the glass.
Maybe you can give this a try later. You can find an easy picture online or in a magazine. Make the grid on the picture and then on the paper and try to copy each square. Choose an easy subject. You can also draw something on a paper or use some old drawings you have and add grid lines. Then copy the drawing you made to a new paper using the grid method. After you are done, you can upload it to Flipgrid. I hope this is of some use for you. Later we'll make one more grid and you'll have a chance to practice that one more time. See you next time!